Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and good morning. Welcome to my class on uh, distributed and parallel computing. You will find all videos on uh, my YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the bell to receive all updates. Uh, today uh, our class is uh, about the parallel and distributed computing performance and scalability. Okay. So uh, the, the performance and scalability actually is for the parallel systems. Uh, okay, uh, here, as you can see, based on our class of yesterday, I uh, actually I asked you about what is the point of uh, having or building parallel system. So the main point actually is to uh, speed up the system, right? To speed up the system, to make it faster, to uh, reduce the cost of calculation and so on. So this is the key uh, point of having or creating parallel system. So uh, in order to measure that actually, in order to measure that speed up or acceleration, so we need to always measure something called performance metrics of the systems. So uh, that performance uh, uh, metrics of the system actually is all about the uh, scalability, the speed up, the cost, the efficiency and everything. Okay. So uh, today in this class, actually, we are going to go through all of that stuff. So we will learn how to calculate how the system can speed up and what's the relation between the system speed up and the number of processors and so on. Okay, so uh, let's start guys. Uh, here in this slide we have uh, uh, some points. So the first point is that the sequential algorithm is evaluated in terms of its execution time depends on input size. So uh, normally the uh, sequential program or algorithm uh, actually in the in this presentation of today we are going to use the word or the keyword algorithm instead of program because the the algorithm is also a kind of program uh, so uh, let me first open the paint to use it so if let's say uh, we have one task one task that's running in uh, uh, sequential so suppose that this is time zero here and this is time 10. Okay. So uh, this, for example, this 10 is 10 seconds. Okay. 10 seconds, for example. Okay. So the execution time or the performance of sequential uh, 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 algorithm, actually, as we uh, see here in this slide, is evaluated in terms of its execution time. So the execution time actually is the time uh, uh, since the, uh, or the time uh, uh, difference between the starting point and the end point of the execution. So for, for that example here, uh, the time starts or the execution starts at time zero uh, uh, for 10 seconds. So this time zero could be, for example, uh, maybe the clock at this minute or at this time is 11.13, for example, a.m. Then here is only 10 seconds, so the time here is supposed to be 11.23 a.m., okay? So this, this is how it's calculated. So the difference between the end or the uh, finishing time of the execution minus the, the start time of the execution. So the difference will be 10 seconds. So exactly as if we started on time zero until the uh, end of the execution, which, which takes uh, 10 seconds. Uh, so here, to calculate, to calculate the execution time, we have uh, many ways, even though in the real, uh, uh, even in the real life, uh, for example, if, for example, we have a marathon or something like that, or maybe a rally or whatever, then we may use the stopwatch, right? So the stopwatch will start from zero, will start from zero. Uh, and the person uh, handling that stopwatch will press the, the uh, start at the time zero, 
when the uh, marathon start, right? And uh, the person will uh, stop the time, the, the stopwatch, when uh, when the marathon finish, or maybe when the uh, first winner arrive to the uh, to the finish line. So in this case, the they will count the time based on the starting point of zero. Okay. Uh, actually, the zero starting point actually is not uh, zero in the real clock. So the that calculation actually is, as I said, is the difference between the start time and the end time. So here, 11.23 minus 11.13, it will become 10 seconds. So this is the concept of calculating the execution time uh, uh, as, as basic as uh, I can, okay? So here, the uh, the execution time actually is uh, said to be uh, uh, formulated as f of x, f of x. So f here means function, function of x. And here the function, the f is a function of time, and the x is the input size of data, or uh, the execution uh, payload or whatever. Okay, so here the x actually is the uh, payload or the workload, okay? And here the f actually is the function of time for processing that uh, data or payload, okay? So the execution time of uh, uh, a parallel algorithm depends on input size, architecture of the parallel computer and number of processors. So the number of processors here, in case of uh, uh, calculating the execution time for parallel algorithm, uh, so the number of processor actually is a uh, key, key for the performance uh, or for the execution time, okay? So I, I will simplify the thing here. So let us delete this and let us take uh, another parallel system. So for example, we have parallel system that have uh, four processors. And uh, for example, we have four tasks given to that four processors uh, to run concurrently. So in, at this time, uh, at that time, uh, what will happen here, we will have four tasks like that. And this is the second task. This is the third task. And here is the fourth task, okay? So maybe this is the fourth task, like that, okay? So here, as I mentioned, this is time zero, right? So here is time zero, okay? So suppose that here is one line like this uh, to mention about the time uh, of uh, finishing each task, okay? So here uh, we have one line, uh, and here we have another line, okay? And then here we have another line, like that, and here we have another line. So all of that lines are to represent the uh, uh, end time of a certain task, okay? So here, suppose that this one, this time here is, for example, 10. And uh, here is time 15. And here is time, uh, for example, 30. And here is, 50. <clears throat> okay, suppose that this this one actually is uh, task one, T1, and this is T2, and here is T3, and this one is T4, T4, okay? So, in general, basically, I want to simplify the thing as much as I can for you to understand it. So here, if let's say we run the system and the system has four main tasks 
and uh, each task ends uh, based on the time we mentioned here uh, on the screen. So task number three was the, the fastest one, which is very short, finished on, uh, uh, finished on 10 seconds. Then the uh, task one finished on 15, task two finished on 13 seconds. Then task four finished on uh, 50 seconds. So here, if I ask you about the, uh, what is the execution, execution time for this execution time equals what like that can we can we say the execution time is the summation of uh, execution of uh, each task so for example here we have 15 plus uh, 30 plus 10 plus 50 is it like that so can we say it's 10 plus 15 plus 30 plus 50 is this okay is, yes. Is this correct? Uh, uh, others. Is this correct, guys? Yeah. Yes. Are you sure? Are you sure, guys? Yes. In, in this case, do you know how much it uh, it will be? Uh, it will be 105 seconds equal to 105 seconds. Is that right? You, you said right, okay? Uh, but this is wrong, actually. The execution, execution time of the uh, entire system is only 50 seconds. Is only... 50 seconds here okay so uh, here this this 50 seconds actually is the, the the point of time where the system ends when the algorithm finished its execution okay uh, uh, here how to calculate this actually it depends on uh, uh, it depends on the complexity of the system that's why it's not easy to make a formula uh, or a general formula that can calculate the parallel execution for uh, uh, any uh, parallel algorithm. That's uh, very hard actually, and a kind of uh, impossible to make it very, uh, uh, I mean, precise. It's very hard. But uh, the, the uh, researchers actually make a very short formula that's somehow can give you some approximation or uh, uh, prediction of the execution time for any uh, software or for any parallel algorithm okay so this actually is incorrect okay so this one is totally wrong okay why? Because if, if we say 105, 105 actually is here, right? It's somewhere here. Am I right? So this is, this is what, 105, 105. But uh, in the reality, the algorithm, the parallel algorithm actually finished on the time 50. Exactly. So the 55, uh, extra 55 seconds are uh, not in use at all. So th this, this formula cannot be used that way. That's why it's wrong. So if we uh, run the tasks sequentially, one after, uh, one after another, so they don't start all of them at the time zero. So in that case, we can calculate the execution time like this, 10 plus 15 plus 30 and so on. But in our case here of parallel, it's totally wrong. Okay, I, I will... Uh, make it more clear so uh, maybe I go down here and I put this here then let us take uh, the example exactly as it is so here if if let's say we uh, let us remove this all of that stuff here so if let's say we we run task one then after it finish we run task two so in that case, task two will be moved here, right? 
Vamos. Will be moved here, like that. So it will run immediately after the uh, task one finish. Then after that, uh, we will have task three, like this. So task three will will become here, and task four will follow it immediately. So in this case, the execution time, as I said, because this one, this one here is uh, 15. Then after that, uh, the the second task uh, takes 30, 30 seconds. Means 15 plus 30 is uh, here is 45. 45. Then uh, this task number three takes only 10 seconds, so uh, 45 plus 10, it will become 55. Then after that, the last task takes 50 plus 55, it will become 150, like this. Is that clear, guys? So this is the case of running it uh, sequentially. But in case we, we run it, uh, uh, if we run it, uh, uh, in parallel, in parallel mode, then the calculation will be totally different. Okay, it cannot be 105. Uh, it's uh, here the final or the total execution time for the parallel system is 50 seconds, exactly 50 seconds at the point of ending all of the tasks. Okay, uh, if for example, if for example we we have another task that starts here. Uh, uh, also uh, under this program so maybe another task here task number five starts here and uh, finished on uh, for example time uh, uh, 60 for example here or maybe time 70 here like this yes time 70 so for example here so uh, in this case the execution time, the total execution time is uh, 70 seconds. But also at the same time, uh, here there are a lot of idle, uh, idle uh, times, which is uh, not in use, right? So this, this processor, for example, uh, this one is processor one here. This task one is given to processor one and task uh, task 2 is given to processor 2, then uh, task 3 is given to processor 3, and task 4 is given to processor uh, 4, then after that uh, maybe this task 5 is given to uh, uh, processor number 1 after it finished, task 1. Because here processor number one will be busy with task one. After it finish, it will uh, it it's assigned uh, another task, which is task five, to the same processor. So maybe here we see uh, uh, processor number one again. Okay, and this is task number five here. Uh, so in this case, as you can see here, uh, here we have <coughs> uh, what we have here. We have uh, an empty uh, uh, I mean, uh, ideal time for processor number one, right? For, uh, uh, I mean, in regards to the uh, task number one, but at the same time, after task number one finish, uh, the, the same processor was assigned another task. So here, the processor number one was busy, was in use for the entire 50 uh, or for the entire 70 uh, seconds during the, uh, the entire execution time of the uh, parallel algorithm. So this uh, processor was 100% utilized, but the other processors, the other processors like this, like this, uh, it was not 100% uh, utilized. Why? Because uh, it, it works only, it was uh, in use only for 30 seconds. Then after that, uh, 30 seconds after the 30 seconds we have 40 seconds of ideal uh, time for processor number two and also here for processor number three uh, we also have about uh, about 60 seconds of ideal time so the processor number three doesn't do anything in the uh, in the last uh, 60 seconds so it was in use only for the first 10 seconds 
So uh, all of that ideal time, actually, uh, during that time, the processors are not in use. So uh, uh, basically, if you want uh, to calculate the entire processing time for the uh, for a certain parallel program, so you can uh, calculate it as a, uh, as the difference between the start point and the end point. But if you want to calculate based on the real execution, so what you have to do is to calculate all of these times. Oops, what's it? So uh, what we need to do, we have to calculate all, all of this execution times, okay? Like this, all of this area, we calculate it. Then uh, th this uh, area will be the entire time of the entire execution time for the system minus the unutilized uh, area the uh, the yellow uh, colored area so this is the, uh, the 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 result or the real execution time or the real utilization of the resources okay but for the here for the serial the serial actually uh, uh, all of that stuff could be assigned to only one processor so processor maybe number one okay so uh, here we don't have uh, uh, unutilized area so maybe after the the program finish, after the finish or the end time of the end point of the uh, program execution, so maybe the processor will become ideal waiting for another program. But this is not a part of the uh, uh, program execution time. Okay, uh, it's totally different than the concept of uh, having parallel. So guys, is that clear or or not? Yes. Other yes. Guys? Clear, doctor. Clear. So uh, here, what I try to explain in 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 here actually is not to uh, tell you how to exactly calculate the execution time. It's not to uh, tell you how exactly calculate, but it's all about to explain for you how the concept is. Okay. So here. The real execution time is only including the, uh, 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 here, let us use uh, green or maybe uh, this one is what? Brown. Oh. Okay, maybe we need to use this green. So the real execution time here is only the green area. Okay, only the green area. Okay, this is what they call it, the real execution time. So in, in total here, in total here, uh, it's uh, started from zero to 70, but the real execution time, actually, we have to consider the uh, number of processors. So maybe what we need to do is to calculate the entire execution time, 10 plus 30 plus, 50, uh, sorry, 15 plus 30 plus 10 plus 50 plus uh, uh, maybe, uh, 55 okay uh, or 50 yeah uh, then this time maybe we need to divide by the number of processors so in that case here uh, what what we have actually so uh, 70 minus 15 is how much 60 55 right so uh, in total it will be uh, if if in serial it or sequential it will become 160 160 right so uh, that 160 okay let us change the color so that 100 uh, 160 in uh, sequential i would uh, write sequential execution time uh, so if we divided it by the number of processors which is 4 so the result here could be like, if we divide by, by two, it's 80, by, by four, it's 40, 40 seconds. So is this correct? It's not correct, but roughly it's uh, somehow closer to the uh, real execution time, okay? So the real execution time here is 70, but if we want to estimate basically, so we, we divide the uh, entire load uh, based on the uh, or divide it uh, on the number of processors it will give us a roughly number which is 
somehow close to the real execution time, but it's not that close. So it's not, cannot be compared to the real time. But uh, if you compare it to the 160, 40 is closer than, uh, closer to 70 than 160, right? So the estimation is something similar to this concept. So uh, maybe later we will understand how, how to uh, really calculate it. Uh, actually, the main issue of uh, calculating the real execution time in parallel systems is, uh, is that we don't know where is the exact point that tasks really start. So here, maybe if, if for example, we have four tasks starting at the time zero, then they, uh, all of them, they end uh, at the time 30, then the entire execution time is 30. Easy. But because here we don't know when every task is ending and when every task is starting and how, uh, how long we have ideal period of time uh, uh, for certain or for each processor, this makes it very hard to estimate. Okay, because of the yellow area, it's very hard to estimate. But logically, the real execution time is the number or the uh, green area divided by the number of processors. Okay? Uh, okay, one, one more thing. Uh, since this task actually is uh, started immediately after task number one, actually, in, in reality, it's supposed to be here supposed to be here because this one task task five is assigned also to uh, processor number one so in this case it's a kind of uh, uh, we have a kind of uh, only four processors are running at the same time okay so that's why the execution time it should supposed to be the calculation of the green area divided by the number of processors or uh, uh, minus uh, the, the yellow area divided by 4, okay, or divided by the number of processes. Okay, guys, is that clear? Does it gives, uh, give you uh, a, a few, uh, I mean, a general view about the how it works or not? Yes, that's clear. Okay, good. So uh, here, let us go back to the slide. Uh, here, the execution time of parallel algorithm actually is uh, formulated as function of x times b. Okay, function of x times b. Where f is a function of time, exactly similar to the previous one, uh, x, uh, f is a function of time. Uh, and here, that function of time which depending on input size x, exactly similar to the uh, sequential, uh, then here times the number of processors. Times here doesn't mean uh, multiply by number of processors, but uh, it's only to show you that the function will involve the payload and the number of processors. So here, which include the uh, rel relative computation time and enter process communication speed. Okay, uh, uh, here the execution time actually, the execution time actually is not only the uh, the time needed to execute that task, but also uh, it's it's the time of execution that task, executing that task plus the time of communication between the tasks because tasks here may require some data from other tasks, so they will send message uh, asking for a value for some, some variables or something like that, then the other task should reply by the value and so on. So the time of exchanging that information or the time of communication is also added to the execution time. So how they calculate it, in general, they, they say it, the, uh, the total execution time is the, the, the processing time of the, the real data plus the overhead time, plus the overhead time. The overhead time uh, includes the communication time. 
So uh, it, it could include also buffering time, uh, communication time, uh, maybe uh, lock time. Many things could be added, okay? But in general, they call it overhead time. Uh, okay? The time is uh, about to finish, and we are still in the first slide, but we, alhamdulillah, we already explained the, the entire concept uh, quickly. Yeah, from the first slide, because I want you to understand how it's uh, uh, working. So here, a parallel system is the combination of an algorithm and the parallel architecture on which it's implemented. So in general, the parallel system actually is a combination of the software and the parallel architecture. So the software actually is a program or algorithm. So that program and algorithm supposed to be uh, uh, it, uh, its nature is supposed to be parallel. So if its nature is serial, that's different issue. So a serial nature cannot be run over parallel. We will not get any advantage, actually. Okay? So here we are assuming that we always uh, talking about parallel uh, algorithms, that uh, its nature is parallel. Okay? So here the uh, parallel system is the combination between the system or the algorithm uh, the bar that's parallel by nature and the parallel architecture together, okay? So scalability of a parallel algorithm is a measure of its ability to achieve performance pr proportional to the number of processors. So if let's say we have one program, one parallel algorithm that runs over one processor, and during that, uh, 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 when it run over one processor, single processor architecture, it takes, for example, 100 seconds, 100 seconds. So what if we run it over a machine that has four processors? So it's supposed to be something like 100 over four, the execution time. Okay, so it's supposed to be 100 over four. This is to reflect the real execution time. Uh, uh, I mean, approximate uh, uh, execution time, and the speed up is different way. The speed up calculation is is another way around. So later in the uh, coming slides, we will see how to calculate the speed up. So how we can say that the machine that has four processors are fast uh, uh, is faster than the sequential machine that has only one processor. So if we say that four uh, processors machine is faster. The question is, how fast, how faster is it? Is it two times, three times, four times? So how faster is that? Okay. Uh, let us go quickly through this. And uh, here, what do you understand about the source uh, sources of overhead? Actually, sources of overhead, as I said, is the uh, Inter-process communication, so the communication overhead is one of the overheads. And I uh, dealing uh, because load is unbalanced, because sometimes the load is unbalanced. So uh, uh, as as of this example, if let's say uh, if let's say we uh, we have this kind of uh, algorithm, and uh, this task is assigned to processor number five instead of processor number one. So in that case, we will see that the load is not balanced. Load is not balanced. So while at the uh, at the time of zero, from the time zero to uh, to time ten, uh, all uh, the uh, first four processors was hundred percent utilized. Okay, but uh, processor number five was idle, right? Then after processor number five starts working, the other process, uh, processors are idle. So because of the unbalanced work, then we will see a lot of yellow areas, which is uh, really unutilized uh, resources. So uh, that is what they call it unbalanced or uh, unbalanced load overhead. And also we have uh, the overhead of synchronization uh, when we have locks. So maybe one, one uh, uh, task look at the, some data in the memory. So the other tasks are waiting for the, uh, for the first task to release that lock, then they can continue their processing. So the waiting time uh, due to the synchronization is also considered 
uh, type of overhead and also presence of serial components in the program because sometimes some programs even to uh, if they are uh, uh, by nature uh, parallel uh, but sometimes they still have some kind of serialization uh, in 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 the components of the program so that's also uh, is going to be considered as overhead okay so here also the last point is the excess computation uh, when we have for example too much execution for unnecessary input so in that case also that unnecessary execution or unnecessary computation is going to be considered as uh, overhead okay so this is the times of overhead uh, here we come directly now to the performance metrics so performance metrics uh, or parameters to measure the uh, performance of parallel system or any other system actually performance metrics is not for parallel systems only it can also uh, used for uh, serial or sequential systems as well so here uh, the first parameter is or the uh, performance metric is the runtime the runtime is exactly as i explained here exactly that's the execution time so here the execution time here for the entire system actually is 70 but if we say the execution time for processor number one is only 15 uh, and also if we say that what is the execution time for processor number three uh, it's only uh, uh handling the uh, task three right it's only 10 seconds but if if uh, task five is also assigned to processor number one after task number one is finished then the execution time of processor number one is uh, the execution time for task one plus the execution time for task five so it will be in total 70 for processor number one while for processor number two is only 30, for processor number three is only 10, for processor number four is only 50. Okay, so here we can see that the distribution of tasks is unfair, right? Because some processors are heavily loaded and some processors are very lightly loaded. Okay, in this case, we, we can say that the system or the load is unbalanced. Load is unbalanced. Okay. This is another concept, but by the way, because we came to this point, I explained it. Okay, runtime here, the serial runtime is called TS, time for serial system. So it's the time elapsed between the beginning and the end of its execution on a sequential computer. So that's exactly to calculate from time zero to time uh, 105 for this scenario. Okay, so uh, this because the system is sequential, the execution is exactly from the difference between the start point and the end point of execution. So in this example, is 105 seconds. Uh, however, in in the parallel systems, the parallel runtime is considered to be uh, the uh, TB. Okay, and instead of TS, is called TB while tb actually is equal let us write it here tb here is equal to is equal to t1 plus t1 plus t2 Sorry, plus like this plus Tn. Okay, so this is how it's calculated. So the 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 T time execution for parallel system actually is the uh, uh, the uh, time of the processor number one or the task number one plus time of uh, processor number two until processor n but this is going to be uh, uh, the uh, what they call it runtime for all processors but it's not the execution time of the program because the execution time of the program will finish before that time right 
So here in this case, the time actually as we calculated is 160, but the system really finished in 70 seconds, right? So uh, this formula is not correct. This formula is not correct. That's why I, I will uh, uh, strike this uh, until we see how to uh, correct that formula. So here, the uh, runtime is the time that elapses from the moment that a parallel computation start to the moment that the last processor finishes execution. So here, come to this example. So here, the parallel system starts at this point, and here, the last processor finished its task. So the execution time will be the difference between 70 and 0. So it will be 70 seconds. Instead of calculating all of that, uh, I mean uh, calculating the summation of the uh, uh, task's execution time. Okay? So here, uh, here we have C example of uh, by program. This one actually we have in different slide. I am, I'm not going to uh, bring it now, but if you want to uh, check, then you can uh, you can check after I upload the slide. Uh, I don't want to go to this program because this uh, program is a little bit uh, complicated. I just want to go through the things first. I explain to you the concept. Then after that, we uh, make one or two uh, lectures for the examples. Okay, now we come to the speed up. We come to the speed up. So refer to on how much performance gain is achieved by parallelizing a, a given application over a sequential implementation. So this is the definition of the speed up. Okay, let us keep this aside and we come back to our uh, example here. Okay, so our example here, uh, let us exclude this. Let us exclude this from our example to make it much easier. Uh, here, uh, here, in in the sequential system, this algorithm requires 105 seconds, right? But when we run it over a machine with uh, four processors, it it takes only 50 seconds, right? So how is the speed up here? How many times this system is faster than that time? This time actually is about two times faster, right? So how we we can calculate that speed up? So speed up here, speed up is equal to the time needed, uh, the execution time uh, needed to execute the algorithm over a serial uh, or a single processor machine or as a serial, which is here 105 seconds divided by the execution time needed to run the same program or the same algorithm over a multiprocessor machine. So in our case, the execution time here is 50. So 105 over 50 is about uh, how much, guys? It's 2 plus something, right? 100. 5 2 divided by 50 it will be 2.1 so this system this system can be called 2.1 x faster okay faster than what faster than the serial or the sequential system okay this is how to calculate the speed up. As easy as that. I don't want to make it complicated for you because if you go through the slide, sometimes it will confuse you. You will not understand the main concept. So exactly, if let's say we 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 go we use car from Kuala Lumpur to uh, Butrajaya, for example. So the first car uh, spins about 10 seconds. Or uh, no, 10 seconds is uh, impossible. So the first car uh, spins about. Uh, uh, 30 minutes and the second car because it has uh, maybe stronger engine or maybe it has wings or I don't know what what it has but it it, it assumed to be faster than the first car so when we use the second car from Kuala Lumpur to Butrajaya it takes 
uh, about 20 seconds. So if the first one takes 30 seconds and the second one takes 20 seconds, so we divide 30 by 20, then we see the speed up is equal to, oh, speed up is equal to 30 over 20. So 30 over 20 here is about one and a half, exactly, 1.5x faster, okay? So the, uh, the unit, the unit for the speed up is times, how many times faster? This is the unit used for the speed up measurement, okay? But if, let's say, if you want to uh, make a calculation of the gain, so the calculation of the gain here actually is only 50%, uh, okay? It's about 50% uh, extra speed, right? So the second car is uh, faster than, or, or the, uh, the difference between the two cars is about 50%. So the power of the second car is 50% uh, more than the power of the first car. So if let's say the first car is 100 horsepower, so the second car will be 150. Okay? Like that. This is what they call it speed up for the uh, parallel systems. Uh, guys, this this uh, 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 topic actually is very important because uh, I think most of the questions in the test one and test two may come from this uh, uh, this area. Okay, so please uh, try to understand very well. If you have anything not uh, clear, uh, try to contact me or maybe ask me during the class or WhatsApp me uh, anytime, guys. Okay, so I'm ready to uh, help you, inshallah. So uh, speed up is uh, uh, annotated as S, okay? So which is, uh, the speed up is a ratio of the time taken to solve a problem on a single processor to the time required to solve the same problem on a parallel computer. Here two means divided. So the sequential execution time divided by the uh, parallel execution time. And also, with here, divided on the execution time of parallel computer would be identical processors. So if the processors are identical, okay? This is another, another thing, actually. Uh, our, our course here is not that deep uh, because it's a kind of introduction to the parallel and distributed systems. That's why we don't want to go that deep to explain what will happen if we have uh, identical or uh, 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 not identical processors? So that's another issue, which is a little bit complicated and out of the scope of this course. Okay. Uh, here, adding n numbers by using n processors. Uh, see next figure. Here. So here we have n numbers. Uh, uh, to be added by uh, n processors, okay? Uh, each processor assigned one number to be added. Uh, in computation, one processor stores the uh, sum of all numbers. So here, here, uh, uh, solving on a single processor, if we suppose that the, the, the time needed for, uh, to run on a single processor is uh, O of N, which is equal to T1 equal to TS, because here the T for serial uh, or sequential system is actually the time for the task one, because all the algorithm will be considered as one task here, okay? And the O here is uh, to represent the complexity, actually. Uh, normally, it's used for uh, complexity. Here is a quite foggy. You, you cannot understand. You cannot do a real derivation to see how it can uh, result and so on. Uh, but anyway, this is to uh, uh, generalize the, 
the formula, actually the, the, the time to solve that issue is Ts, which is equal to the time needed to uh, finish the task one. Why task number one only? Because here the sequential system has only one task, okay? Then solving the same uh, uh, problem over parallel, uh, the time of parallel system actually is called TP, which is equal to O log to N, O log to N. So the speed up here, it will be something like uh, N over log N. So if let's say the number of processors, uh, sorry, this is the N, uh, the, actually the mistake here, they use the N for two things. Here it's supposed to be like M, okay? Instead of N, it's supposed to be M. And here, instead of this N, it's supposed to be M. So the payload here, it's supposed to be divided by the log N, which is the number of processors. Okay? Anyway, this is because this one is a very common formula. I cannot change it. Everywhere you go, you can find it. So uh, even if you search in, uh, uh, in Google, for example, if let's say speed up, speed up, you see, it's suggested immediately. So O log N. So here also, if we see, uh, if we say uh, uh, O divided by log N, oh, sorry, not O, this one N divided by log N, like that. We see, we will find it in many, in many books, in many, you see, n log n. Uh, so all they use the same annotation. That's why I don't want to change it. Just keep it like that. Uh, uh, try to memorize it for the exam. But always keep in mind the concept that I explained here. Okay? To understand, to understand practically how it works, you always keep in mind the uh, this example. Okay? Uh, I, I will skip this slide because time is uh, already finished and uh, we cannot continue more than that so we will stop here okay guys because time is uh, already 12 so inshallah we will continue next week uh, okay guys uh, is there any question no question let there are you sure you understand? Guys? Uh, yes. Honestly, tell me. Are, are you sure you understand? All of you understand what I have explained? Yes, doctor. Yeah, I, I think today is uh, maybe a little bit complicated, but also simple at the same time. The concept is a little bit simple. Because we, we only speak, uh, talked about the uh, what they call... Uh, uh, what they call it, speed up, or uh, the difference between the sequential and parallel systems in, in terms of execution time. So the, the concept until now is still simple. Uh, but later we are going to go through the efficiency, we go also through the cost, and we will have different concepts and different ideas, okay? So thank you guys for attending my class. I hope that everything is clear. If you have any problem, any question, you can ask me anytime. You can WhatsApp me, email me, or whatever. Uh, you try to communicate with me, and inshallah, I will try to uh, help you based on my time. Okay? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.